Boom! Welcome back to the Big K. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, comment. Ski trip 2024. Getting all the kids ready to go. So, we'll let y'all know when we get there. You too. They think they're in the rap video and shit. But they're in the rap video, I don't know what's going on with these dudes. Y'all remember them from last time. So we get to get back with y'all, man, when we get there. Boo!
Cows. Oh, no, I don't got time to get out. I'm not going to give you some milk. Me too. I'm not going to give you no milk. I don't know where you ain't supposed to be at. As much as you want a vacation, I don't think it belongs out here. That's what the people tell you. They grow their own Christmas trees out of jail. That's crazy. Just the whole store. They gas is smoke dirty now. It need to be. Smoke dirty now for gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
Yeah. 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 That's what I'm going to be. Can't get that up. LSU. Big LSU out here. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's all I think I'll be in Christmas every day. Yeah. My man with the snowboard over there. I got time I have down here. Yeah, snow right there. Over there. Bow, I'm in the Walmart out here on a ski trip, and I threw on some boots that I ain't wore in a couple, I say about 10 years, not a couple years, about 10 years, and look what happened. Oh, 
both my damn souls came off. And it's raining this snow. I get back with y'all, man. Bo. They were one of my souls. Y'all see it's raining. They were my other end, so. I mean, my other out, so. At Walmart. Get back with y'all. Yeah, turn the high beams off. Really? They all, well, you can't do it out here. You really just want to just have your, your, your fog lights on. Because it's going to reflect back off here. Damn. This is Yo, crazy. This visibility is like zero. This is crazy. Do y'all see this road? It went from raining to still raining but foggy. And no way we did it. Is it just like, is it just fucking... Stop sign. We gotta go this way. Hold on, go up, go up, go up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we ain't got a ditch. This is crazy. <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, what you say, your butthole tight, huh? <laughs> so imagine how I feel looking right out this window right now. Just fine. I'll make control. Somebody else? About to get foggy again, geez. Right here. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Get it cleared up. Did, that, um, did this man have that, that phone holder or is that yours? Uh huh? Then we'll make them happy, you know. Right behind you, though. Damn, <laughs> this is crazy. Yo, this shit is crazy. Yeah, this is different. Cause he's scared. He they go around him, man. <laughs> hey yo, this is crazy. <clears throat> and it's so crazy you don't see no no um hazard sign for that. Like uh, like yeah, fog upcoming or something like that. Subscribe, comment. Hey man, we on the stairway to heaven, man. That's what it looked like up there.
It's foggy, you can't see. It's a windy road. Wish us luck, man. Shit like a scary movie. Hey, <laughs> if you take the wrong turn, your ass definitely is out of here. Oh, you know what we forgot? Firewood. Replace it, yeah. I see you got a box open by the uh Gabe. Big Gabe. Okay. Okay. Okay, they whipping up. 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 We out here. We out here. Skimmy, 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 skimmy. Say what's up, say what's up, say what's up. Say what's up. Say what's up. Really? <laughs> what's wrong with you? I'm Jamiris. My son. I don't know why his shoes downstairs. They've been tearing up. What you doing on my veggies? What you doing on my veggies? Nah, Meatball about to get his ass up out of there. Thank you for choosing Sharp. This is the Airbnb. It's for the kids. So, about to go brush my teeth, wash my face. What's up, together? See what they cook for breakfast. Get back with y'all. All right, we up and at it. Got my stuff together. Kids still getting their stuff together. <laughs> Say something to the people, man. What's up? What's up? Yeah, all the kids waking up, coming out their little, out their little cubby. I said, don't question. Just go downstairs. That's right. You don't He just told me bring them downstairs and make sure they was up. Yeah, everybody downstairs. Let's get it. Good morning. Look, she's in the refrigerator. First thing in the morning, she's in the refrigerator. Say something to the people, Jesus. What's up? He's about to make the breakfast. Let's get it. The fur baby. We got a fur baby in here. You look, you ain't the only bear around. <laughs> Y'all hear that? That's Jay over there. What's up, Jay? Uh, I know, right? 
Say what's up to the people, Gabe. What's going on, people? Good morning. That's right. Man, don't you mess these eggs up. You hear me, man? Huh? All right. Big bear breakfast. It's going down. You need another plate? Wise people, wise was the main was, was, was 
repeated throughout that whole chapter? What is what is what is why? What does that mean? To follow the banner. Oh. That's for anybody, not just you know, one or two people. Does anybody know what why? To be smart. And the youngest one in here answering the question. <laughs> yeah. And that you don't know, or that you're ashamed of talking, you know, speak up. This this is an interactive, you know, little thing right here. You know, we all family in here, we all know one another, so we need to go on. Let me give you all the, the definition, dictionary definition. Why? Having or showing experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Responding sensibly to a particular situation. So why was the was the word throughout this whole chapter pretty much that stood out that was repeated? At y'all young age, y'all have to be wise, especially in the streets. Especially where y'all come from, most of y'all. Why being a wise kid will turn you to a wise adult. Making the right decisions, doing as you're told, being disciplined, uh, taking correction, and respecting the people that's in uh, authority, like our the mentors. Respecting what we tell you and doing it. You know, the word that I that I see that stands out to me the most is discipline. Like Barry said, discipline. Because discipline is having the strength to do something that you don't necessarily want to do. You know, you don't, you know, you, you're going to have influence from your friends, from people around you, from school, from everything. But you don't have to necessarily follow what you know in your heart is wrong. Because regardless of who you are, you, are, you have a moral compass. You know right from wrong. Everybody does. And sometimes it's easier to do the wrong thing. Sometimes it seems to be more fun to do the wrong thing. But inevitably, it, like I said, it leads to a road that is uh, negative and can ruin your life completely. So discipline is, is very important. And that's within every aspect of your life. Whether it's school, whether it's your job, whether it's listening to your parents or mentors or somebody in authority, discipline. Whether you're working out, whatever. Discipline is also don't matter your age, no matter your kids, no matter age, 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 age. That's right. Learn that discipline. Get disciplined now in your youth, and it'll follow you through life. And and I'm gonna take it back to Gabe just said. As far as you guys being young, you know, I spoke a message at church <clears throat> years ago and actually had a, a road trip. And I had, a, you know, half kids on this side and I had half kids on that side. The kids on this side represented the world and the kids on this side represented the church. And it's very obvious that the world, and I had them like pull it, you know, like doing tug of war. And right now, the world has more of a pull. They're, they're winning that tug of war battle because everything in the world is so, you know, our eyes, what you see on social media, what you see on TV, you know, when we were growing up, like hearing cussing and, and seeing sex and stuff on TV, you didn't see that stuff. But now it's so open, you know, that you guys are exposed to so much more because the enemy wants you while you're young. And if he can get your mind while you're young and get you to make poor decisions and get you to, to stray in the wrong direction and, and get you to go into the world, then he got you. you. know, and that pull from the world, you know, the drinking, the partying, the cussing. When I was in the bathroom last night, I heard young men talking about girls and getting girls and all that stuff. You know, y'all so young, you really don't know what you're getting into, you know. You have a kid or something like that at 13, 14, 15, you can really ruin your life, somebody else's life. And not only that, you're not mature enough for something like that. So 
it's easy to go in the world because everybody's doing it. Everybody's cutting. Everybody's having sex. Everybody's drinking. Everybody's smoking weed. Everybody, all your friends around you doing it. Everybody in the neighborhood is doing it. And it's easy to do that. But to be a real rebel, to stand out and say, you know what, I don't need to do that stuff. I'm going to be different. And get up out the environment that you're in. You know, that takes a bigger person. And that goes back to being disciplined. Saying, you know what, I don't need to go to this party. I'm not missing up. I don't need to drink, you know, and, and be under influence or smoke weed or, or try to have sex with this young girl, you know what I'm saying? I can be a little more disciplined than that. And I can set my mind and my, my heart and my ambitions on something bigger and something greater. You know, I have a, <clears throat> I got a cousin that's a doctor. His name is Ramon, he lives in Ohio. And I use him as an example to my daughter when she was younger. And I said, Ramon <clears throat> put his schooling his education first. And now he's able to do anything he wants to do. I've seen pictures of this guy at a, a Detroit auto show, uh, Dubai, down in the Caribbean, vacation, cruise, like all types of stuff. Skiing out in Colorado, just doing what he wants to do. You know, because in order to do stuff like that, even this event right here, you know, it costs money to do stuff like that. And the only way to position yourself to be able to do what you want to do, you have to sacrifice sometimes when you're younger. Say, hey, you know what, I'm going to focus on my school. I'm going to focus on my education. I'm going to focus on doing the right thing that God asked me to do instead of going in the wrong direction. You know, and it's real easy to fall in the wrong hands and, you know, go to the left or to the right. It's super easy. You know how I know? Because I did. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure some of the older folks in here who've actually had real life experiences. You know what I'm saying? We know. And those of you who know me, I don't know, most of y'all know me in here, but I'm a firefighter. And I'm also a medic. So some days I'm on the ambulance, some days I'm on the fire truck. You have no clue how many dead bodies I've been. How many shootings I've been on. How many stabbings I've been on. Domestic violence. You know, suicide. I saw a man hang himself in the jail from the bed who could only sit about this high because he was done with life and he took the sheet and started wrapping around his neck and literally laid on the floor. At any moment, he could have said, you know what, I, I, I can't do this. And just all he had to do was sit up. That takes a long time. That takes a lot of, you know, you're, you're serious about killing yourself. Man. You know. But I'm telling you, all y'all might act like you are. I promise you, you're not going to get hit in Ohio either. I've seen it. I've seen what it does to the body. And it's not a pretty sight. All the things we just went over is discussing that chapter. Is discussing that yeah. chapter and ultimately being wise. Making good decisions. Making good decisions in life, period. It starts at home, it starts at school, it starts every day in life when you're out on the, on the, in your community, in your neighborhood. It starts there. It starts at Jesus, too. Amen. That's all that ultimately where it starts. <laughs> and again, follow his instruction, his word, it's complete wisdom. And thank you. you tell me, me personally, I don't speak from my own experience. I was raised in the church, do right and wrong, all that stuff. But once I became a teenager, out here wild, went to do my own thing, partying, running the streets, drinking. You know, I had two DUIs, uh, been in jail. You know, I mean, and Big Gabe, we've been through a lot too. A whole lot of stories. We, we, we grew up together. You know, we're first cousins. And we grew up when we were kids. And I'm telling you, it was until I decided to give Christ my life and start doing the right thing, that's when I started seeing my life through this right here. Because as you get older, and especially as men, young men, me personally, this is how I feel. In life, you should be doing this right here. If you find yourself flatlining, like you're doing the same stuff from last year, doing the same stuff this year, same stuff from next year, and you're not really growing. You're kind of just flatlining in life. And in reality, the devil kind of has you in a hole and he's in a little spiral 
child is really not growing. And he should be growing every year. He should be growing emotionally. He should be growing intelligently. He should be growing, you know, spiritually. He should be getting better each and every year. You know, I have a couple of guys, you know, I was like, what's your grade? Like, that's there. Right. Well, not really that good. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't take stuff like, you know. And we're not saying these little squares and don't enjoy each other. And that's why <clears throat> when y'all come here, because this is a Christian outreach. You know what I'm saying? So when, when you guys come here, and I know I haven't been on every trip, and some of y'all still get to know me right now, but ultimately this is a Christian outreach. And we, we want to plant seeds in you guys' lives to hopefully that y'all make the right decisions later on in life and, you know, and find Christ and get in good, you know, Bible teaching, uh, church, you know what I'm saying, and start to follow uh, Christ and whatnot. But ultimately, we want to see everyone here doing good. I don't ever, ever, ever want, because I'm stationed uptown at Station 9, right up in Africa, I mean, right up in the Bristol Island. And I don't ever want to go out on a call and it's one of you guys, you know what I'm saying? And I pull up and I see you laid out on the ground or something. That would hurt me. You know what I mean? So we're not saying you gotta be a little square, you can't do anything, you can't have fun. That's why we let y'all kind of run around and kind of you know enjoy yourself because you still young. You don't enjoy yourself. All we're asking is come down to it. If you got a crossroads, you gotta make a decision. Am I gonna do this or am I gonna do this? I'm asking you guys to think about what the word says. Think about what would Jesus do. Or you can say, will my mom and dad be happy if I made this decision? You know, if you got to do something in the dark and you can't talk to mom and dad or any of us about it, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. If you got to wait for one of us to walk out the room and talk about something, you probably shouldn't be talking about it. You know, so, anyway. That's exactly what this trip for this outreach for this mentorship is about. We get y'all away, we try to get y'all away from your environments. Uh, Give y'all an opportunity to ex uh, have new experiences of stuff that I may not ever do or have ever done. But at the same time, plant seeds in y'all lives so y'all can live a long life. Mm -hmm. Any, we can die at any point, <coughs> car crashes, stuff like that, but um, most of the majority of the time, we fall because of our own decisions mm -hmm. and not being wise. Y'all are accustomed and have seen and heard about the shootings and, and death. Where y'all from? In your families. Brothers, cousins, friends. Super news is it's getting worse. And most of it is all the stupid stuff. Petty stuff. We just want y'all to this trip, these trips. That's why when we take this time, we want, we want to pour into y'all, really uh, take this time serious and really think about what we're saying when y'all go home and we, we ain't around no more. You still got the Bible, you still got the Word of God, you still got God to talk to, you still got us, but 95, 99% of the time, we're not around. Y'all making your own decisions as you're growing up, and the consequences will be uh, greater. You don't want to be in jail. You definitely don't want to be dead in the streets. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Discipline and respect. Making them wise decisions. Making them wise choices. That's what it's all about. And the thing is, these decisions, they can help. They can be good in your life or be bad in your life or in your life. They're going to be split-second decisions. Split-second decisions. Whether I jump in this car with this, with my buddies that are going to spin the block or, or, or to uh, use some type of drugs that can make you OD or whatever, it's going to be a split-second decision. So you kind of you need to have... <coughs> What we, what we, yeah, what we call, like, more in sports and everything, muscle memory. So that it's really not thought about. I mean, you're going to think, you're going to think about it, but it's almost got to be almost like a, 
an instinctive type of reaction to do the right thing. Because like I said, it's going to be a split second decision that you're going to have to make in a matter of a couple seconds. And that split second decision can ruin your life, can make your life good, it can end your life. So you kind of need to, to already have a path that you're charting that's on the good. You see your ball, we about to do this, we about to do that, all, 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 this and that, da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I ain't gonna do that. I, I, I got something I gotta do. You ain't gonna miss nothing. Boom. So back to the Proverbs 13, the first verse. A wise child is set past discipline, a mocker refuses to listen to correction. It ain't just talking about your parents, that's talking about anybody in authority. Because at the end of the day, Nobody, none of us, the teachers, and hopefully the people, the, the adults you have at home, want to see anything bad happen to y'all. So we ain't telling y'all to do stuff just because we want to, we want y'all to do it. We're telling y'all and trying to plant these seeds and teach y'all because we want y'all to succeed in life. Period. So think about that word, why, being wise, having wisdom, and making those. Uh, great decision in your life because it's going to affect you for the rest of your life. Did you have that in feedback? No. Alright, hold on. Sister that's bathing her, feeding her, clothing her, you know what I'm saying? Putting uh, paperwork together for my mother and stuff because she showed me that over the last couple of years before I hit 10. I was cooking Thanksgiving dinner all the time I was 10 years old. So I was handling all of that responsibility at 10. <laughs> but when I was out in the street, I always was saying that I didn't want to stay out there. I knew it was a dead end. My god cousin is a, uh, he is a retired assistant chief up there. And he used to stop us all the time just to kick it with us. And he used to tell us, one day he told me, I was going to miss, gonna miss me something, he just ran from there, where I'm from, that he pulled us over one day and told us that you only got three to five years out there in the street. Three to five years. In three to five years, one of these things is going to happen. You're either going to be dead, you're going to be in jail, you're going to be broke. That stuck with me. And that's the truth of the matter. Another thing is that when you out here in the street, I know that that's a 24-hour thing, especially when you roll up. You got to get every dime you can get. At the end of the day, when you think about the man hours that you put into that, what he just said was so real. You make so much more money being out here doing a legitimate job than you ever would make being out here in these streets. That is real. When you're young, the amount of money that y'all get when y'all start out young, that is good money to y'all because y'all never really worked and got money, right? The streets make it seem more appealing because you can get more faster. But as you grow in time, that money increases that you make as you get older. A man reaches his financial stride 
around 40 years old. That means that you start to rise and rise and rise with the money that you start to accumulate and make. I was talking earlier about investment. All that stuff plays key into all of this stuff. But again, the choice is yours. You have a choice to make. I made a choice. When I moved down to Virginia, I said, I don't care about my reputation. I don't care about what nobody know about me, none of that. I was in a place that nobody knew my name. I had a chance to build myself up legally. Before I stopped, I was pushing about a quarter key in about a week or two. I had just started speaking to some people about dealing with heroin. And I met somebody who changed my life. And they gave me what was called the knowledge of myself. All right? So in that, I learned that there was a strength in me. You know what I mean? Like, going through the scriptures, you'll see there's a scripture that says, you got God, the children of the Most High. Jesus asked the question, I need not God. It also says in the New Testament, the kingdom of heaven lives in you. So when I learned that, that, that in Genesis it says that God made man in our image, but the original word is Elohim. That means we. We made man in our image. When I realized that, that that power was in me, that, that I could stand on that responsibility, it changed everything that I wanted to have in my life. I didn't care what nobody thought, nobody said, and I kept grinding until I get, got to work. I felt I could do the same things that I was doing when I was in the streets. I was doing it legally. Like, mm -hmm. So you ain't got to worry about nobody <laughs> trying to rob you, no police coming after you, nope. nothing like that. Because that's the stuff we got to deal with. You got, um, people setting you up, all types of stuff. In jail ain't fun. I know so many people that been in and out of jail. I was lucky. I was one of the lucky ones that never got caught. But I know so many people that's involved in drugs for them. I got cousins right now that's in and out. Yep. In and out. In and out. You know what I'm saying? I just visited my cousin for the first time in prison. And this time that he was in, somebody scarred him up. Handsome brother. Scarred him up. For what? Absolutely nothing. And he don't want to be doing what he's doing. So like I said, the choice is yours. I just wanted that on. Any other guys, anything else? At the end of the day, it's all about choices. Yep. Being wise, making those wise decisions. That's it. Life is in your own hands. You gotta make decisions for yourself. You can't make it for nobody else either. Yep. You can't worry about nobody. All I'm gonna say, <laughs> hey, all I'm gonna say is. From my experience, I'm gonna just tell y'all you go out here and mess around. You get locked up. Bro, they lock you up so fast, bro. But when you get a bail, it's time for you to leave. 
Rather it take you 28, 48 hours to get out. But they lock you up in two seconds. No problem. Something to think about. Yeah. I mean, like, recently, yeah. months ago, yeah. they were best friends. You know what his best friend did? He stole his he stole his boy gun, smacked him with it. And went, he was looking for him. So he went around his grandma's house and waited, thinking he was going to come around there. The grandma called and said, let's just walk right in front of the house. You know what he needed to do around there? He went around there, killed him. Just like that. Next week, he go to court. He's looking for life in prison. Just that sentence. For nothing. Just because his homeboy took his gun from him and smacked a little on the bus his ear up. He didn't go after him. But when grandma called him and said that boy was at his, at his front of her house, he went around him. Didn't say nothing. Took him out. Right downtown. And the next week he go to court. Life is over. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Do but he wasn't gonna do nothing. yeah, but at the and same time, was scared and said that the boy was right in front of her house. You, he smacked you with the gun, that ain't right. Most people want revenge, but then you killed this man. Guess what you about to be for the rest of your life? Over a smack. He yeah, he slapped me first. Nah. But like I get it, y'all different. The way the world growing up now, y'all like standing on business. Y'all like, you know what I'm saying? Somebody do something to me, I'm definitely going to do something back. Just like with the water situations. Somebody splash me, water, I'm going to put the whole picture on. I get it. But, yeah. Yeah. Or oh, you'll stab him. See what I'm saying? Because somebody splash you with water, you're going to stab him with a knife. See what I'm getting at? But I'm just saying. It, go, it goes from playing around to now you're in a serious situation. Yeah. Most of the time when you have to make that decision, it's gonna be a, a split quick second. second. You're gonna have to be like, I'm not gonna do this. And in a split second, you snap. And you let your emotions get the best of you. Yeah, you got a little girl for y'all too, you know. Yeah, juvenile court.
came in for it. I said, you want to go? I said, that's fine. I said, but after March, then what? Then what? Man. You know, you go out there and, and everyone is emotionally charged, you know, but what do you really achieve? So what I told him was, I said, you really want to make a difference in your family, in your life, in your family's life, in your community and people around you. You position yourself. You put yourself in a position to affect change. You know, and the only way to do that is either occupationally, you know, or, or educationally or, or financially. You know, we can sit back and say, hey, I want to do this, that, that, that. But if you're not in a position financially or, or occupationally to do that, then you're not doing nothing but He's talking. smoking marriage. Yeah, he's talking. You know, so I want to say one more thing, and then I'm going I'm to shut up. Um, I don't know if anyone has told you guys this lately. I want to say to every one of y'all, I love you, truly. And when I say I love you, from the bottom of my it's genuine. I honestly, truly want to see, you know, from the youngest to the oldest in here. How old are you? You're the tallest. I'm just saying that. Now, he's old. Tomorrow, he's old. How old are you, man? 16. You can get this one. So, yeah, I, you know, I just want to say that I love you guys, man. And if we if we reprimand you, if we get on you and say something, you know, tell you, be quiet, pick that up, you know, it's not that we're trying to be mean or messing up like that. We're just trying to help you guys mature and get to the next level. So I love all you guys, and I want to see the best come out of each and every one of you. So, like, the next meeting we have, the next meeting after that, the next meeting after that, you know, I want to see everyone doing better. Mature, you know, and grow. None of us will be here if we didn't love y'all. Period. When we look at uh, the next generation and where we want y'all to be, I'm not that much older than y'all. So I can definitely relate a lot more to what y'all doing in today's society now. But we ain't doing what we're doing because we just want to do it. We're doing it because we want to show y'all different stuff, get y'all out to our own environment, show y'all that it's different fun out here. And it's fun other than what y'all do daily, which ain't good most of the time. But we're here to pour into y'all. At the same time, we want to uh, just show y'all the right way to do things. In return, we ask for respect. Every mentor here. Uh male or female, whatever they ask you to do, do it. And there will be a consequence. Absolutely. And and on top of that, not disrespecting us, when the ladies get their way on, you know, don't lose every sight of everything you talk about. Respect them as well. Period. Point blank. I don't care how they carry themselves. I don't care how they act or what they do. But y'all might be, you know, send a little text back and forth, whatever, but everybody respect one another, you know. And you stir it all to the parents, so you stay the same. Sure. Yeah. 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 For sure. I tell you, most of y'all that are very dead. Because of pants, son. My mom's still carrying <laughs> Like you said, none of us are perfect. We're not sitting here acting like we got it all together. We we always ever learn. Gabe, Ken, myself, Big Gabe, Bear, Pooh, Tate, all of us, we're still learning ourselves, even at our age. I'm 47. I know Gabe is 48. I'm not sure. 49. Who's that? 39. 46. 46. 46. 36. 30. Years young. Years 44. Talking, it's, it's a lot of experience in here, and yet we're still learning ourselves. Yeah. They were trying to talk about the robbing and stuff. Yeah, they were, yeah, I mean, they was, man, they were doing multiple murders, man. I mean, yeah, them dudes, man, man they, they were was, doing all the murders in the news for like wild. four years. I'm about to say, this is in the news? Yeah. yeah. They, they was really out here wild. From like 08, like 08, 09, all the way to like 12 or 13, 90% of the homicides in the news was, was them and their crew.
they will rob drug dealers. And uh, when, when Rabbit came home, you know, they will rob drug dealers. And if you didn't put up a fight, you know, chances are you got away. You know, you got all okay. And then they started having niggas that were coming home from prison. And, and they're crazy. They, and they're trying to, they're trying to, to you know, uh, try to get the same reputation on the streets. Because Rabbit went and did, you know, like 10 years. He came home. Um, and but he, you know, in the Britain, you're still hearing about what these niggas are doing, what your boys are doing in the streets. So they want to kind of do the same. Oh, I want to get that. I want to get that 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 M under my belt. I want to get me murdered. So Rabbit, they would do licks and stuff like that. And Rabbit went down. Uh, oh man, you know, every, everybody they don't rob nigga. He tied up. They gonna leave. They ready to leave. Everybody leave out. And Rabbit, oh, I forgot something. I'm about to go back in there. I gotta forgot to grab something. And he go in there and execute dude for no reason. Uh, like, and oh, just. Follow like ESPN, it ain't working. I'm in my element. Oh, you can't play space, but you can play play table tennis. Like you ain't from downtown Newport News yeah, Boys Club, man. When I had the table, I put it out for the kids, ain't it? Damn. Kids ain't in love out. And then it took up my space. Five months. Five months. Five months. Five two. Ooh, 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 ooh. Who's winning right now? Your dad. Your dad. I want to play. I'm playing. Still too late. Seven three. 
So they mess up like that? It's Ten fault. That's what happened when you lose in Uno, man. 24 degrees outside. You lost in Uno, man. All right. Second night here. We got a chili cook-off. Boys against the girls. And they got my guy in the kitchen. Tell them what we got going on, Chase. We got my chili. Cornbread that we made. Cornbread. This is the cornbread. Oh, my God. And the boys made the cornbread. He made chili. Oh, man. Oh, stop kicking me. Feel me. So, yeah. And this is the vegan chili. Oh, my God. That joint bust. Vegan chili. One out of ten is a 20. Ka. It's a 20. Ka. So, you have to stick your hands in that one, dog. Hey, y'all heard what he said. We're gonna win this one. Yeah. <laughs> the girls are here. Behind the seasoning, it's got him crazy. The girls are here. Hey. We're gonna win. You sure? Okay. I hit it for you. You was trying to hide it, right? Man, they was gonna get it like that. Man, me ball, you hiding your chips? Yeah, man. You what? just got open the bag. What you hiding them for? For later? It's gonna be good. You gotta trust the process. I don't think that's true. You gotta trust the process. I think that's soup, son. It's our food. Oh no, we gonna get it. We gonna get the end. We gonna get the end result. Definitely. I'll be wrong, I can smack right? Chili. This is the girl's chili right here. And it looks it's like still chili. gone. She said eyes look what? It look nasty. Y'all come back to dry. Oh. 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 She hating. She hating. She hating. She hating. Hey, gay. She hating. That's the cornbread made by the boys. 
The girls didn't bring no cornbread or no crackers. This is the girls. Yeah, it is. Here, Tori. You do. It's gumbo. Get out. It's gumbo. Just go ahead. Nah, I'm about to go ahead and get this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? You know what? And it's funny because all y'all girls had the same reaction. Sir, get my seat. It's not because you're nasty, though. Eat it. The same way. Reaction. They said, Relax. Oh, it's hot. Okay. The temperature was hot. You blow it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Gay. Hey, Gay. We up in the points, just to let you know. Nuh-uh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to get the boys to get the points just because they swim. They locked in. We'll be up in the five points. Either way. He cooked it, the one that's in the pot. The one that's in the pot. So you gonna change? I ain't worried about it. 